and welcome to American Printer TV. I'm Tamara Ferlansky. And I'm John Hamilton, and this is the source for the latest in industry news and education. We have quite a busy show today covering everything from how to get in touch with prospective customers to the future of web to print. A lot of interesting topics on tap. But before we get to all that, let's take a look at our top stories. SPC introduces its loyalty group at DMA. We take a stroll down the Print 09 Education Main Street. And John Parsons talks about trends in web to print. Specialty Print Communications, or SPC, has launched its loyalty group. The national print company and full-service direct marketing specialist made the announcement at the DMA 09 conference and exhibition, a premier event for direct marketers. The SPC loyalty platform increases sales by leveraging customer data, including audience attributes, behaviors, and preferences. From there, relevant, meaningful, and results-oriented messaging is created. This allows marketers to engage consumers across multiple channels. With a full spectrum of loyalty offerings, SPC enables marketers to appeal to their customer base with their programs such as loyalty cards and membership fulfillment, life stage and activity trigger marketing, and new customer acquisition through predictive modeling. For more information on SPC's loyalty group, visit www.specialtyprintscom.com. As packaging solutions become more sophisticated, the demand for a new kind of fold or gluer machine continues to grow. Heidelberg is meeting this demand with the Diana X115 fold or gluer, introduced at Drupa 2008. Named for the Roman goddess of hunting, the machine has been heralded for its flexibility and user friendliness. Features include all purpose folding units and feeder belts, which can be exchanged according to the cart and surface within just a few minutes. The company reports customers have been impressed with the speed of the machine, which can reportedly produce more than 200,000 straight-line folding cartons or 50,000 collapsible cartons per hour. Mass series production of the X115 began earlier this year, and it was on display at Print09. For the full story on Diana X115, check out Faster Folding Cartons featured in American Printer's October issue, or get the article online on this website, AmericanPrinter.com. Printers from across the country were on hand to check out the latest technology at Print09. American Printer had the chance to catch up with a few of the attendees. We do all type of printing, uh, like brochures, uh, a lot of uh, postcards uh, when they have like special events. Uh, but whatever the city needs, I mean, we, we do it for them. It, it was a good show, you know, I, I just thought it would have been a lot more people here because uh, we was here last year. So uh, this year we thought it was going to be a lot bigger. Uh, well, that's what everybody was telling us because this was uh, a print show and they said last year was a graphic show. So, uh, but uh, I mean, it was good that, uh, to see a lot of this. And what specifically are you here at Print09 to check out? Digital equipment. It's all about digital equipment nowadays. So that's where the industry's heading. Uh, that was our primary objective coming here was to take a look at uh, digital equipment. Are you guys, do you guys have any digital equipment now? We do. We have uh, we have an HP Indigo and uh, we have a Zycon Post-it Note Press. Um, our Indigo's a little bit old, so we're looking to upgrade it, and that's why we're here. I, I thought it was a good show. Um, we were fortunate, you know, we got the magazine prior too, so I was able to go through it and kind of I, you know, highlight the things that we wanted to see. Um, and today I should be able to wrap it up. I got a couple more things to look at, but overall, very pleased. Um, one thing I couldn't leave without seeing would be um, some of the automated finishing equipment that's available for our type of work. Um, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, it's margins coming tighter and tighter and uh, the more we can cut back on all the finishing labor that we have, uh, that was one thing we definitely had to see. An important part of the commercial printing industry is its dedication to education. We turn our spotlight on education at this year's show. How did you prepare your students for this experience today? We do a, a worksheet that takes the kids onto the website and uh, for Print09 and then they go through a series of activities where they look things up and get acquainted. We access the website and try to prepare the kids to uh, get used to meeting professional people and how to present themselves and get information about the different presenters that are here. I'm going to be sharing with the students the importance of just career choices and options and, and the, uh, the beauty of uh, graphic communications and how, much it, how big it is. Uh, just the growth that will take place in the next uh, five years, uh, greater than 5% in every area, but also just to have fun, dream big, and chase it. 
you know, in this industry, there's a, a litany of opportunities for these students to engage in. And they don't have to wait until they're out of high school or go to college if that's their choice. They can start these things right now. What do you expect to learn here at the print show? Um, basically just offset printing, like uh, one of the other girls said, just expanding my knowledge on that because I've only done screen printing, so. Um, expanding my knowledge on a bunch of different techniques and like how different designers think about things and what they start off with. <laughs> um, just seeing like the new like technologies and like all the advancements that there is in offset printing and every, all the types of printing. Brian, tell us what got you interested in supporting education in the first place. Oh, well, uh, being a born and raised printer, I think that you get one gets to a certain point in their life where they decide that an industry that helped develop them, not just from a moral standing and a work ethic standing, but but, but it, as a whole person, you know, and coming from the, such a wonderful industry, that it was time for me to kind of step back and give back some of my knowledge and, and the energy that I got out of the industry back to other folks that would be interested in such a great industry and help get the word out. I, I met Ted here, who was, who was a wonderful influence for me, and we've done a lot of work with Ted. Um, and it, it, you know, it's very exciting, and I, and I think it's a, um, you know, it, I get a lot out of it personally by giving back. This press uses dry plates, UV inks, no water whatsoever, by I mean a dry plate. We are printing from very thin stocks to very thick stocks. And the primary application I see for this type of press, it is rather unique in that it is capable of doing very short runs on many types of plastics. Because it is UV, if we step down back here on the press, we can actually see the UV units in the press itself. The sheet of plastic will come out, it's been printed, it will be UV cured and right into the delivery. I've seen these types of presses used at many plastics printers for short run, especially with some of the new sports cups, credit cards, uh, uh, plastic mats for restaurants, etc. Uh, very, very popular because once again, very short run. And plastics, quite frankly today, we see as a UV plastics is a growth area in the market those printers are doing very well. So I'd just like to acquaint you with this technology today. It is rather unique. Thanks for that, Ray. Now, although web to print is now commonplace among commercial printers, there are still new capabilities and opportunities for printers to explore. John Parsons, analyst for Byte Media Strategies and former editorial director of the Seabold Report, stops by American Printer to discuss new e-commerce capabilities and the future of web to print A web to print is kind of a hard term. It's it's like sort of like saying, do you have a telephone? It's so commonly used. We've been covering this. I've been covering this uh, since 1999 when it was called print e-commerce. I've been. I think at the show, uh, there's a, a really significant number of service providers uh, providing what's called software as a service. These are hosted services that offer uh, web storefronts of various types. Some of them are. Uh, catalog ordering systems where people have standard products that they order. Some of them, many of them have customizable features so that you can change those products before you order them. And that's what most people think of when they think web to print. But print shops can actually look like they offer complete services uh, through these systems because they can often, for example, do business cards for a, a, a corporate client and the system allows them to, to offer that in their catalog and give, uh, to have the actual job done by a partner. So it's a, it's a good way for printers to appear uh, to be offering a, a wide range of services, even audio tapes and audio uh, DVDs and so forth, things that are part of a marketing campaign and their storefront offers those. Sounds like there are a lot of interesting things on the go. Thanks for that, John. And if you want to watch our full interview with John Parsons, you can select the download button on the side of our screen or on iTunes. There will be a lot more interesting industry information in two weeks when we'll be back with another webcast. But if you can't wait until then, be sure to check out our previous casts under the archive button right up there. And we'll see you next time.